What's up guys, Mike Iman here, your roof on. Just coming at you from Austin today. Beautiful day outside, loving it. Uh, but before we get started, I wanna say thank you for stopping by the YouTube channel, checking it out. Definitely drop me a like if you like what you see and subscribe for more content. Now, the reason I'm making this video is to showcase this property right here. Now, my buddy Donnie Willis with River City Construction and Design uh, called me out. We got some very, very interesting, janky stuff going on the inside and his concern was that the roof was that up to up to that kind of level of jankiness. So uh, fortunately for Donnie and this particular client, there's not really a whole lot going on the roof. So I, I certified it. Um, there's a couple minor tweaks that I recommended and we're going to tackle those. But the main reason for this particular video is to talk about what's going on inside. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Donnie and have him walk us through what the cheapest bid looks like. So let's dig in. Hey guys, I'm Donnie Wills of River City Construction and Design. And as like Mike said, there's a lot of janky stuff going on inside this property here. Um, come with me and take a tour and see exactly what it's like hiring the cheapest contractor you could possibly find on the market. Follow me in. So for starters, you got this lovely fence picket porch. It's all gonna be torn up and new concrete put down um, to bring it up to code. No post base on this post, it will rot eventually. Um, as we move through here, unfortunately we had to tear down every piece of sheetrock in this house and every piece of insulation. Current requirements for code require that insulation is R15. Um, they use R13 insulation and against the homeowner's wishes of using R15. They also didn't remove the prior insulation, the blown in is from 32 years ago in this house. Um, it was very packed and missing in a bunch of places. Uh, as we walk through here, you can see a myriad of issues that these guys have done. Uh, for starters, you got what appears to be conduit up above grade. That's gonna be really fun to, to floor over. Now we have to break this concrete back up and put new conduit under the ground. Um, they use speaker wire for lighting systems. That it creates a huge fire risk uh, through here. Um, you know, you should always use 10, uh, 10 2, 12, 2, 12, 3, whatever the, the code is for the area. Um, they had hidden J boxes, electrical sitting up in the attic. Normally J boxes in the attic are okay if they're accessible. Unfortunately, the way this house is framed makes this portion of the attic inaccessible, which means that those J boxes are against code. Uh, moving through here, they had left the old washer box in the wall and stubbed out and it was on. So the second the water got turned on to this house, it would have flooded it. Coming through this lovely area here, you can see where they cut a header, where they cut the beam for the door support for the header. And while this probably won't fail because of this new cripple wall right here, probably this won't fail, but you still should you know, not cut headers throughout the house. Um, moving through here, there's no wiring for smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, alarm system, low voltages, such as your telephones, coaxial, and uh, um, you know uh, communications. Uh, once again, this is behind the sheetrock. You see where they cut the old plumbing manifolds and didn't re-plumb anything. So all these manifolds are wide open. The second the water got turned on this house, it would have flooded this house with the pressure of every water system in here. Uh, moving through this house, you can see that they pressure blocked a lot of the framing in. Um, which is okay by code. It's not the preferred method. The preferred method was the joist hangers and stuff. Um, it will pass code, but it's one of those things where it's not a preferred method of, of good framers. The HVAC system is undersized in this entire house, uh, so it's likely going to have to be completely torn out and redone. Um, moving through here, they destroyed the fireplace. What was once a beautiful fireplace has the poor man's attempt at a German schmear on it. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to reface that entire fireplace. Uh, moving through here, you got, for some unknown reason, they already finished out electrical when there's not even, you know, texture on the walls or sheetrock and things like that. Um, pay attention to these headers right here. They might, this header is a complete failure. They, that, that won't support anything. Code requires six inch minimum headers. They cut every single header in the entire house uh, to try to accomplish their goal of putting this in here instead of reframing it really quick. It would have been a simple, quick and easy fix. Yeah, exposed wiring just sitting in the wall, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, moving through this bathroom here, uh, they left, they did an amazing job on the actual tile work. The tile work is not actually that bad. It's actually within tolerance and it looks good. 
but they sheet rocked it and didn't texture anything. So it, it's kind of like a, a, a backwards way of doing stuff. Unfortunately, because the tile work looks good, the tub that's under here is plumbed incorrectly. Um, you can see here that this black pipe goes nowhere. It ties into a vent that drops down and hits a wet vent. Um, that's plumbed incorrectly. They have exposed, exposed uh, uh, plumbing in the attic. Now, mind you, this hat was all sheetrocked already. So, you know, the second they turned this on, it would have, you know, flooded the entire house. Uh, moving through what is the master bathroom and master bedroom. We look here on what is supposed to be a support wall uh, for this chimney. The fireplace is here. There used to be another chimney here that faced the, ma that faced the master bedroom. Uh, when they tore the old chimney out, they didn't support this wall correctly. So literally the entire side of this chimney, flue line and everything, and this joist beam or this beam that runs across back here supporting it is sitting on one lone two by six and a two by four that is only toe nailed in. Uh, that is completely incorrect. Plus, there is no cripple or header here or cripple here to support the weight from this right here. Eventually, will fall. Uh, moving to the last part of this house, which is the master bathroom. Uh, this is one of the biggest no-nos ever in construction. Uh, if anyone ever tells you that they can turn a curb shower into a curbless shower, a true curbless shower, by grinding your concrete, don't do it. Your concrete is four inches thick at minimum by code and by engineering and all this great stuff. When you start trying to shave that concrete down to create a slope into your drain, you end up having about two inch thickness of concrete and guess where it's gonna fail? It's gonna fail right there because now you're exposing all the, the rebar and the tension cables and things like that to try to attain a slope. Um, so that's exactly what they did here is they came in here and they, they grinded this all down and tried to create a slope in here and this is what they have now and they did it completely just horribly wrong. So we had to tear out the entire shower to fix this. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the price tag on this, the contractors got away with about $250,000, you know, what they already put into this house and we had to tear it all out and it's going to cost the homeowner another two hundred to $300,000 to rectify this, uh, not including major materials like cabinetry, uh, tile work, things like that. Um, uh, unfortunately this happens all too often in the construction world where people hire a contractor because it's the cheapest bid that they could possibly find or they think that an expensive bid is uh, 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 you know just too expensive well you think my bid is expensive wait and hire a bad contractor and have me come back and do it again you're gonna pay twice um, every one of these windows in here needs to be pulled off all the masonry pulled off there's no flashing no wrap on it no nothing whatsoever they're all insulated completely wrong uh, you know, it's just, it's things like this. That's why you hire contractors that carry licenses, you know, your plumbers, HVAC, um, your electricians also required to have license. Um, your general contractor should know, uh, uh, you know, the local city and state codes and IRCs and stuff. Um, and you know, it, it should be trustworthy. It needs to be a trusting relationship. Unfortunately, this homeowner thought they had a trusting relationship and the, the guys that came in here and did this did the worst possible job ever. Um, so check references, get multiple bids. And whatever you do, don't go with the lowest bid because chances are this is what's going to happen. Uh, once again, I'm Donnie with River City Construction and Design, and I hope not be in your house one day. All right. And uh, for any of you guys in the Austin, San Antonio? Austin, not San Antonio. Just no. Austin. Just Austin, Austin area. What's your number? 512-470-4439. All right, guys. So don't go with the cheapest bid. Go with the most value in the bid. Exactly. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next, on the next project. Thank you.